Welcome to The Art of Flow, a podcast that explores connecting with your body, mind, and soul via movement arts and creative exploration. Through conversations with movement artists, circus performers, flow artists, and fire dancers. My name is Morgan Dalgano, and I'm the creator and host of the podcast, a flow arts enthusiast and a life coach. Hi, today we're going to be talking with Gabrielle Bonville about circus resonances and artistic communities. Gabrielle Bonville is a circus artist and lucid dreamer and serial entrepreneur. She believes in the power of arts as a catalyst for global change and self-actualization. She discovered from a young age that magic was real and that everything is seeded from the mind and propelled through habits. She is the co-founder of Momentum Collective which is now actively working on developing the world's most mind-blowing artistic community designed for radical autonomy, expansion of mind, connection to nature, and safety of all beings. Momentum was named as the 2021 Best Investment for Artists and Digital Nomads in the Yahoo Finance News due to their spectacular residencies. They also announced plans to expand their offerings to include a permanent residency in Costa Rica, providing a stable home and space to gather for artists, healers, and performers. Welcome to the show, Gabrielle. Yeah, thank you so much for inviting me. <laughs> so tell us the story of Momentum. Where did the inspiration come from? And what were some of the successes and challenges that you experienced when you were starting it? Momentum started from a desire to live in community with artists, basically. It was super grassroots. It was us in the middle of nowhere in Nicaragua, um, we rented out a house, me and my business partner, Therese, um, and actually not even business partner, she was a friend, and we had extra rooms, and we would share our passions, you know, like in the morning I would teach yoga, and then she would teach aerial silks, um, and then we were seemingly always in, in inviting and, and inspiring other people to come and stay with us, too. But then as people would take up the other rooms, it was like more diverse art forms like fire spinning or contortion or there was once there was a magician there. And we just ended up like taking turns on uh, showcasing and sharing our art, you know? And at one point we just had a full on schedule where we would just be training all day long. And then we were learning about like the intricacies of living together, like who cooks, you know, who, who cleans, who um, is setting up for the electricity. So we ended up like learning the ropes of how to work together and live together and train together. And then we realized that it was really popular. So we decided to open up like, or to rent out a larger house. And this time there was like 12 rooms. And then, yeah, until now, seven years later, where we have like you know, one, one year we had like three or four running residencies all over the world and we would be feeling like over 40 people in each. Yeah. Wow. <laughs> Already it's like so nuanced to learn how to just live with a couple of people, but then to be living in a space where you're also training, creating art together and you got to sustain your health if you're creating art and you're working so hard. It, it's really cool to hear that you came up with a system that worked for you. Was this a system that you then used in each of those residencies or was it tweaked and changed to be site specific? Yeah, that's a really good question. Um, no, but there's certain um, like things that we do in every residency. For example, we, we learned really fast that meditating in the morning, all of us together worked really well to set the tone and also ex- uh, expedited the manifestation process of whatever it was that we were praying for because we have to understand too that like art is not what we do is who we are like what we do on the outside shapes who we are on the inside and vice versa so the greatest piece of art that we can work on is ourselves and it starts with the spirit like in the Kibalion, they say that all is mind so when we understand ourselves on a vibrational and spiritual way then we can we like i see definitely a correlation between the mind and spiritual devotion and like the um, mastery of art The best performers and artists that I have worked with pray and meditate as a priority. And so, yeah, so we figured out that really quick. We also learned that like, there's no need to be eating meat or animals 
at all, that all species and beings are equal. So from the get go, we just did not introduce meat at all. And we were able to prove that we could train and pray and meditate and create our businesses and not have to harm any animals. Um, and so, yeah, there's a progression. It's like we meditate, then we do yoga, then we go into the air, either high lining or aerial silks or hair hanging at this point, it's, it's <laughs> exploded. And then we go into like creating our businesses because we have taken care of the mind, we've taken care of the vessel, we've been able to achieve something greater than ourselves and then we start our businesses. So that is in every single residency, yeah. Interesting. You ground yourselves actually in the spirit first before you go into like the more mental aspects and uh, very like heady aspects of what you're creating. Yeah. Yeah. Because that's the thing is that we go from the infinite into the finite because the thing is that what we create is also very like limited into our um, like our ability, our planetary beings, you know, like our actual human form and what we can create with our bodies and our minds but if we are able to tap our source or source our inspiration from the infinity what we create doesn't replicate what's already existing do you know what I mean I do and I'm curious because last year you created a lot using this type of methodology this type of um, just focused spirit care you set up at least four or five different residencies in 2021 to 2022 between Nicaragua, Costa Rica, Portugal. Can you tell us a little yeah. bit about those residencies? Yeah, so the, the progressive series of meditation movement and then like creating uh, our projects, it's the, it stays the same in every residency, but we do wanna hone in into one specific theme. So for example, the one in Nicaragua is based on music production and sound healing. So it's all about sound. The one in Costa Rica is the one that I personally developed is the one that we call green residencies. And it's the idea of earth arts. It's like not creating um, something outside of earth, but with the earth. So we're talking about like sacred geometry. We're talking about like high lining in between trees and in installation that shifts and alters the consciousness of the people observing it. Um, and then we're just going into that field. So it's more permaculture. And then the one um, in uh, Ometepe, which is an island, is based on performance and choreography. That's it. So it's really about like sacred clowning, shamanism, plant medicine, and the idea that we are made of various selves, like we're not one self. In fact, right now, we are many, many, many selves. You, we are many, many, many people but we are transmuting one consciousness to speak this moment. But if we are able to create distance between who we are and on understanding that we are actually many people, then with that distance, we can choose how to express ourselves in this life. And when we choose to express with consciousness and with radical authenticity, what is returned back to us is a reflection of that, of that um, in, like infinity for lack of a better word, you know? So we go into like performance, clowning, choreography, and then through that we can pray. And wow, it's amazing when you learn how to like pray and, 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 and act and perform in front of 10,000 people. Like if you, if you do that, you can see why there's so much energy gathered when you are being observed and the power that we have as beings to be like in service to that, which I can go into later, but yeah. So there's different themes for different residencies. And, and now actually we're looking into creating a train the trainers program, which means that you or anybody could do the three month training and we give all of our secrets out, basically all the accounting, all the systems, all the marketing, all of the guest teachers, all of how we plan things out, everything. And then you can apply to do your own residency so that we can start creating micro communities across the world. And it's not just dependent on us, you know? Um, yeah. So, yeah. <laughs> then you can send the ripples out further because like with each of these residencies you have, you have artists coming in and actually how about how many artists are a part of your residencies? Because each of those artists then are part of other communities and they're sending ripples out into their world. So like these performers who are being trained, 
who are being taught how to like embody different aspects of themselves and tap into these different parts they may not normally step into or that are part of them somewhere deep inside could share that with the world on stage. And that's going to impact everyone that sees them and everyone who's a part of their community sees what they're doing and can learn that too. Yes. Yeah. So, yeah. 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 It's funny because I'm, I'm heading over to Burning Man right now. And I know like so many people that have come to Momentum before and also now I'm going into another community that's creating human experiences and I'm learning from Burning Man and taking that influence and inspiration into what we create so it's it really is just about like a network of relationships with different subcultures our subculture is designed and based out of like ashram and radical expression you know like circus arts is definitely by far one of the most underground and um like edgy, I guess you would say, edgy arts. And that invites a whole different, that like a, a whole different diverse um, perspective and expression. So yeah, I think we've had over like 2000 people in our residencies. And sometimes we have residencies that are like 40 people. Sometimes they're like 30, sometimes they're 50. Um, so it really depends. But now we're also looking at a permanent location, which is what I'm heading. And it's gonna be very interesting. To, it's a whole different ball game. Let's put it that way, yeah. <laughs> when folks come together to collaborate, magic happens. What are two to three different memories of creative collaboration you recall occurring at one of Momentum's residencies? Ooh, creative co collaborations? Cool. Okay, well, the ones that come up, the, okay, my two favorite ones are uh, in Guatemala, we're at Posada Schumann and it's a castle. And so we decked out the castle with all of the aerials and all of the paintings. And we would create like um, night freak shows where we invite the community with the res like the residents would create a show and then the rest of the community would come in and we would have like an immersive, very avant-gardist experience of like, you'd be watching somebody having like a, a tea set, you know, or like, a, um, and you'd like they'd be having tea and then all of a sudden they would just like start like being um, levitating from their hair, for example, you know? And so that that's something that would be like one of my favorites. And then obviously the one that everybody knows the most is the, um, the Circus Island residencies where we have like 30, 40 people that come together and we train for a month. And then we all travel down to Envision Festival from Nicaragua. So we get on a bus, we all travel down, we go to a theme camp, we will put people on stage in front of 8,000 people. Yeah, and it's amazing. Both of those are sound amazing. One is like a very specific memory and it's just, it's magical that intention that went into designing it. And to, for like a local to come in and see like, what is this residency about? And then to see that and to be surprised by the magic of it sounds lovely. And the other yeah. is such a community and like a, a um annual occurrence so it's a it's always growing and always changing but it's still a memory it's still something that is a incubator that sounds magical yeah yeah absolutely and when you talk about magic it is it is I mean it is the right word to express and explain and define what happens in residencies because and it's not because it's momentum it's really just this phenomenon that happens when people that are expressed and non-apologetic about who they are in terms of like you know being able to accept themselves and to fully devote themselves to loving who they are by any means possible um, and who take care of their spirit and who care about like conscious relations when you put people like that together, they do the job themselves. And there's this kind of like portal that happens where people can just wake up in a different vibration that feels as if anything is possible. But it's like it's like grooming that vibration so that it's your baseline. You know, it's not just something that like you go and and you're there for a minute and then you leave. It's it's what if we were able to be in that baseline baseline at, on a permanent basis, which is like where we trampoline from and not where we achieve like people the, the normal person's flow state or the ones that they seek to achieve for their whole life is where we wake up in this is where we you know what I mean?
I mean, this is so our where can point. where can you go from there if that's your starting point and then you come together with everybody exactly. having that as a starting point. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. What are the challenges you face in setting up residencies like this? The challenges are human emotions, you know, because we are all these like vibra vibrating, eclectic explosions of emotional vibration. And sometimes it's really hard to um, maneuver and manage so, mu so much of it. Um, but then we teach tools that allow people to be radically responsible with their emotional health, you know, um, and, to, and to be accepting of people for who they are. But a big challenge right now is that we're in a global economic recession and in the planet's sixth largest extinction. And so when we ask the question, like, what is truly important? Well, what's important is water. What's important is the earth. What's important is indigenous wisdom. What's important is to disidentify with the body and more into the light body because we are going to be asking for, we, we, it's as if our collective consciousness is asked to uh, transition in this lifetime almost together, you know? And I love the, the indigenous wisdom of like, if you're just to tr practice dying once before you die. So these plants, uh, plant medicines like ayahuasca, these are important. They're, they're the greatest tool for our self-actualization. What's important too is to celebrate, celebrate as much as possible, even with all of the changing tides of our times, remaining equanimous and celebrating. And we can do that in community, right? So it's a bit, it's a challenge because it's like, well, people don't have money right now, you know? And people are scared. This thing with COVID left people are so fucking scared. And so it's like, well, we have to reclaim our sovereignty and our power. And that's a hurdle because people are like, what if I get COVID to go to Costa Rica? It's like, mm, you're not. And even if you do, you won't die. And if you do die, then you, it was almost as if you were meant to die. And let's practice accepting all forms of existence, not just this one, you know? But um, yeah, so there's that, the challenge of the global recession is probably one of the biggest ones because we are transitioning into a new ec economy. And this economy is based on commodity and the commodity is being governed by large, the large corporations, enterprises and government bodies. And so what is a challenge is to uh, get people to understand that what is more, most important before even art, I would say, people can argue with me if they want, is to learn how to farm. Yeah, it's just then we pick up the paints, then we pick up the, the toys, then we pick up the silks, but first we root down to rise up. So long-term vision of sustainability for humankind is most important right now. And the challenge for the residencies is people just taking responsibility for their emotions and also for taking the willingness to, even though there's a global recession going on and COVID and fear, to take the step they need to take for themselves to grow as human beings. What was your first experience with the circus arts and how did you get into flow arts and aerial silks? I mean, I'm from Montreal, so a lot of people are from the circus world and it's very common here, to be honest. And um, I was introduced to it because my Venezuelan family came from Venezuela and then joined the circus. And it was a means to express what they had gone through in a way that would shift and metamorphosize their more dense emotion from their really crazy experiences. And they would be able to reshape it. Mm -hmm. And I saw the magic of it. And I also saw how, how great they were able to, like how powerful they became from devoting to the, the circus arts. But then my twin sister does aerial silks. So I saw myself doing aerial silks and I was like, wow, I have never seen anyone fly before and I just wanted to try it. And then when I tried it and I realized it's so hard at the beginning, you're just like, it's really difficult, but then you keep going and keep going. And then at one point you just, you get the hang of it and you realize like anything in life, everything that seems really hard at first becomes easy. And the, the present moment that was like, 
oh, this is so hard becomes a memory. And so this is no longer true. It was a truth because you identified with the pain and the difficulty as being real, but that everything in life changes, you know? So that's the, the cool thing about like circus arts or, or arts in general is that like every, everyone is like, oh, I'm not good enough. And oh, I'm not, am I a real art? Am I, am I a good enough artist to come to residency? It's like, you're always an artist. The only thing that is in standing in your own way is the constructions of the limitations that you place on yourself, you know? Because everything is becomes a memory. The only thing you need to do is keep a pattern going and a tempo, and that tempo is going to become who you are. So make sure you've got some strong habits and you'll be whoever you want to be, you know? So, yeah. How <laughs> have you personally used strong habits in your life to develop your art form? I wake up in the morning and the first thing I do is to shower myself with gratitude for who I am and what I have gratitude is by far the strongest energy and then I smile and I breathe really consciously then I meditate and then I usually do some yoga you know so same thing as my as residency I don't need to be in residency to do these things so and then but then I go running and something I've introduced in my habits now is breath work. So I go running, I do breath work, and I usually jump in a waterfall because water is like so energizing and cleanses everything. I come back, I make a juice, and I usually fast until like 11 or 12. And I put Palo Santo because Palo Santo and Sage, what it does is that it neutralizes the ions around your body. So you want to shower yourself then with the neutralizing force. And then you sit to do some business. You know, I, I definitely like in business, I mean, projects, you, you create, you create. And in our day and age, we create through social media, you create through um, like teamwork or being online. So I do two or three, four hours max of work. And then I do more art. Either I sing, I play music, I play harp, I do harmonium or I get on the silk. And um, yeah. And so I've like really promised myself to try not to work more than four hours a day um, in something that is super heady because I try to keep the balance of my, my mind and my heart and the heart is most definitely um, art. And then, yeah, and the last thing that I try to do is to um, keep focused on right relations. So try to spend time with a beloved, your mom, call a friend and keep engaging those friendships that make you grow um and so I try to do that at night <laughs> yeah wow your day sounds your splendid yes it really does answer my question because you're really taking care of your spirit and that comes first and your health and that comes first and then in the day it comes to a point where you're ready to use your mind and kind of you're talking about working on the computer is that part of like being a digital nomad when you say business where does this connect to the digital nomad lifestyle? Uh, well, I definitely am starting to do online courses, which I have got my own thing, quirks about. But I mean, at the end of the day, the younger generations, they seem a lot more capable of being online much longer. Their attention span also is like super quick. They grab, they grasp information in a way that's different. Whereas like, I definitely feel that I get tired from doing four, like three, four hours of, of work on a computer screen because I live in the jungle and I live in the forest, you know? Um, but the part of the digital nomad, it's, it's that like, for example, I, we have like a eight person team. So I need to get on calls with them to see how marketing is going, how socials are going, how accounting is going, how website is going, and then just make sure that everything is aligned with the common vision. Um, so it's more like team management and then um, vision. Like I also do a lot of partnerships. So I, I definitely like who, whoever is doing something inspiring in the art fields world, you better know it that I'm watching them and studying them and usually befriending them and creating right relations with them because they usually end up in our residencies anyway. So it's the digital nomad space is about being able to be independent in what it is that you want to pursue in your life and most of the time it's just being online you know it's being on a digital platform so yeah 
That makes sense. So for you, it is those couple of hours you dedicate to that online sphere, but you also have very clear boundaries around that space so that you can do it consistently without getting burnout and without, you know, like physically being on a screen impacts you, but also mentally it impacts you. Yeah. Yeah. But in, I think in any case, wherever it is that you are, whether you're in the spiritual realm, the art realm or the business realm, it's funny, my friend here has this mindfulness app where there's like a little gong sound that happens every 20 minutes. And it's like his reminder to drink water and to breathe. And if you are practicing consciousness at a really high level, like you're aware of your breath in all moments, you know? So it's like, you're just staying grounded in whatever it is that you're doing, knowing that this is passing time and a moment to be creating on the vertical axis. So like the time goes like this, you know, in this, in this dimension, time is linear, but then the way that you create is the opposite so there's like this point of conjunction where there's two points and you create there from intention and time and that's where it's like you want to be mindful of your breath coming through because then you get swept up into time or you become running after time or you're always doing and at one point you just want to be like creating a level of consciousness from whichever field that it is that you're in if that makes sense yeah i'm really being stuck by these planes because with spinning, we're always working on these planes. You got these planes and you got one more that's going between the two. And so I love whenever like sacred geometry comes up so much within the space of philosophy connecting with movement arts. Yeah, because I would say that like with the, with the certain fire, uh, fire props that deal a lot with circles, you know? So when you're creating circles you're really like drawing infinity and you're embodying infinity you're drawing portals you're being entered in you're entering in so it's like understanding the personalities of time space and shape as well so yeah like I don't actually fire spin I have this weird idea that I'm gonna have too much fire so I just never do fire but I do create spaces for all my friends to do fire and then to you know perform but I do I do see when people spin fire or, or play with flow art flow flow toys that they get into the state that just by me observing them i get into a flow state i'm like hmm interesting so observing people in a flow state gets you into a flow state what else gets you to into a flow state these days and what's that feel like for you that's such a great question i thank you so much for that question to be honest, one of the things that I've been noticing is that spending time alone where you aren't placing your observation or preoccupation or attention on other people will allow you to really meditate on and contemplate on your natural state of being. And when you can observe your natural state of being without judging it, there's something that happens there where you can just be. And that is really important because especially when you build communities, where you perform in front of many people, the act of being observed shapes you and affects you. And when you are in a state of full presence without judgment, you can introduce different techniques to light yourself in a different way. What I mean by that is like in Egyptian philosophy, they have a, they have a belief that we have a ka body and that, that this is a light body so when you are in full presence without judgment and you put an intention of shining your light more there is something about that that gets me into a flow state because every room or environment i step into is now nourishing those around me to a point where they nourish me back and that symbiosis and synergy is very effortless yeah i may be missing some of what you're saying but what i'm hearing is energy relating and paying attention to the energies of yourself and the spaces around you and those around you and that kind of grooming and that itch, that mid playing with that getting curious about that gets you into a flow state yeah yeah, but it's also not, it's, it's also being intentional with the presence, the quality of presence that you bring into a space because you can just be you, but then if you choose to be you with the quality of, of presence that's also serving others, 
then that will be reflected back to you. And that's why they say that service and gratitude are the most important aspects of, of devotion. Um, and not just because it's good for others, but because it's good for you, <laughs> you know? And that for me gets you into flow states. But then, you know, I can also answer the typical thing, which like in the air, I get into flow states, time stops. You know, I, I, I'm able to just be in the present moment uh, when I'm doing, um, when I'm dancing, when I'm falling in love, you know, all these things. Like, I think that when there's no time, you're in flow state, basically. Mm -hmm. We were talking before we set up this interview and you mentioned that you're really interested in lucid dreaming. Can you share a little bit more about this and how it connects to your experience of the world? There's no reason to believe that this, what you're experiencing right now is not a dream already. You know, um, we have this tendency with whatever, this ego state to label things, good, bad, cold, warm, dream, awake. There the one cannot exist without the other the awakened state cannot exist without the sleeping state everything in the universe is a vibration and the vibration depending on like how fast it's going will be a like first it, it's happening in all things you know in a city it's very different vibration than when i'm in the forest but also your brain has different vibrations so the different vibration of your brain will allow you to perceive the world in a different way there's beta, there's alpha, there's delta, there's all these different states of consciousness through the vibration. When we get into uh, sleeping, what is really interesting is that when we get into a state of sleep that we are dreaming, it is the same vibration as when we're awake. It's the same one. The thing is, is that we have two different bodies happening at the same time, okay? We have the Newtonian body, and we have the quantum body. The Newtonian body is like gravity. It's our, it's our physical form, the fact that I can grab something and boom, this is the physical body. But at the same time, our cells are made of 99.999% of empty space. And in, those empty, in that empty space, quantum law exists, but it's different than Newtonian law. It's different. So we can like have you know, tang uh, quantum entanglement happening, we can have um, uh, like the act of being observed changes the outcome. This is all in quantum state. But yet the, the person that is like actually being, you know, existing is doing something called identifying. And we identify with the Newtonian state. I'm human, I'm awake, I'm part of this gravity. And it's true. But what we tend to forget is that we are also in a quantum field. And the Egyptians and many other cultures decided and practice how to be in both states at the same time, the Newtonian and the non-Newtonian, the, the quantum. And so what happens is that when we dream, it's like something switches. We identify more with the quantum field and not with the Newtonian. We, we levitate, we gravitate, we fly, we are able, it's like we're not dense. So something switches and I love that state and that state is called lucid dreaming, you know, that's what it is and so I studied in a temple in Guatemala and I you know they they say that you should ask yourself as often as possible am I dreaming but what I am what I have also and I would have also understood from this is that you can also realize and m make a mantra to remember that I am dreaming like I am dreaming right now. I'm dreaming. You are dreaming. We are dreaming right now. There's no difference. So then, then at one point, it's just the question just becomes, well, what body do I want to identify with? And when you operate in that state of knowing you're dreaming, of acknowledging, okay, I'm dreaming now. I feel like there's a certain amount of power that comes from that. Like if I'm dreaming, what now? What do I want to do with this dream, with this time? What do I want to create? I'm yeah and also what because when you if you know that you're dreaming then you can ask yourself too like what is truly important because the things that we can if you know that you're dreaming right now and you're like stressed out at a supermarket but if you just stop for a moment realize you are dreaming you just had you are in more of a newtonian body than the quantum body but they're both experience 
then you can go into your imagination. You can go into your infinite, infinite self and, and explore another reality that is happening than you just getting fed up with the supermarket lady or something, you know? So you can ask yourself, like, what is truly important? And then that usually will bring you back to your higher self. And in that state of higher selfness, then you, you can choose to wake up in that dream according to that identity. Maybe that's going a little far, but it's for sure like one of the greatest secrets that I think I've stumbled upon in my 35 years of wisdom. It's like, if you know that you're dreaming and you can choose who you're identifying with, identify from your higher self and, and be in the quantum field as much as possible. Thank you so much for sharing. You mentioned before that you're setting up a permanent residency in Costa Rica. This is super exciting to have a space that is going to be available for artists in the long term. Yeah, so we are looking into building from the ground up uh, in a space that is completely conducive to flow states in all forms and uh, artistic creation. So We've done it. We've done spaces for musicians, for circus artists, for performers, for uh, farmers, even earth artists. And now we know what they all need. So we want to create that space and we want to have a program that is running at all times. And that is not just one month residencies, but can be at long term if they want to um, and have volunteers programs as well. And, and also investment opportunities for people who are wanting to have their own homes in a community platform. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and we wanna do it in the jungle. We wanna do it near a waterfall. We wanna do it near other projects that are badass and we wanna do it in Costa Rica. Yeah. That's super exciting. And you were saying it's, it's really interesting. There's uh, challenges that are coming up for the permanent residency. Can you share more about those challenges and how you're facing them? Well, you need investors. You need to find people with millions of dollars and you want to make sure that they're really cool. Um, you want to make the challenges. How do you build a road? Do, how, do you, how do you build, um, how do you make sure that the water system is going to be feeding uh, 200 people? How do you put up a solar system that allows for ecstatic dances and also for the growth of a, of a community over generations how do you build a temple how do you like all these questions that were like i have no idea but we're learning you know um but also like the legalities of things it's like oh you need a permit to you need a permit for this you need a permit for that you need a permit where do you go for the permits how do you get lawyers okay and then the accounting and finding <laughs> it's not that there's challenges it's just again on that access point of like time and action you just there's just a lot more actions in the timeline and that that's you need to just be on it in your ability to breathe through it in grace and in flow so that you don't get like eaten up by the amount of things that needs to happen and then you find the right people that's the other thing too is like you'll end up finding the right people for any projects you just need to know who you're calling in. And when you know who you're calling in, that person will show up. Love it. There's a lot of questions to answer, a lot of projects to work on, but everything is manageable by looking at it, asking those questions and calling in the right people. What can we do, or perhaps are you currently doing to support equity and inclusion and diversity in our communities? To be honest, I feel like the economy has been one of the major play things that doesn't allow people to have access to residencies. And so my main thing is to get a place that we own so that we don't have to pay the venues and all of the extra costs that come into like giving the profits to the venue so that it's more accessible. What is your ideal world? What is the world you're creating? Yeah, I think such a good question imagine like if you were able to build in such a way that just by being inside the space you are being recharged and so recharged that just by being yourself you're recharging others around you that's the ideal world for me for sure <laughs> love yeah. it thank you so much for sharing is there anything else you want to share with viewers and listeners before we end for today no i think um if you're watching this is because you're meant to watch this and a part of you 
brought you to see this and to hear my words. So get in touch with me and come and find out why it is that these words are resonating with you. And that the new world is not just not only possible, but it's already happening because you already spoke it and you already imagined it. So now it's just a matter of like getting the creators together, which are the artists, and to put the building blocks one by one. And we are great. We are stronger than the sum of our parts. So um, yeah, what part are you, you know? <laughs> yeah. You can connect with Gabby and check out more about what's going on with Momentum Collective by clicking on the show notes below where you'll find links to social media and websites. And we'll see you next time. The Art of Flow is a free public resource for creators, teachers, and supporters of the arts who are interested in floor arts and fire dancing. It is available for mainstream distribution on iTunes, Spotify, SoundCloud, Google Play, YouTube, Stitcher, and at theartofflowpodcast.com. If you believe in a show that provides inspiration for artists and conversations on the creative process, please support the podcast on Patreon to keep it going. As a supporter, you can earn early access full-length interviews, submit questions for interviewees, be mentioned in an episode, and get a behind the scenes look at how the podcast is made. That's the art of flow if you're searching for it online. You can also follow the podcast on Instagram and Facebook to receive shorter clips of episodes, updates, and notifications when new episodes are released.